He's, I, I'm new at this. <laughs> so, uh, it must be us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, that's already more than, than we do, because usually I just say, hello. I'm Willa Mamet, and this is Paul Miller, and we're going to play you some music. I am shoeless. I'm shoeless because I'm toeless. Thank you so much. Paul and I tour a couple times a year. Um, he comes out to California where I live uh, in the spring once we're sure that the pipes aren't going to freeze on his girlfriend. And, and when mud season starts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and then I come, I come back east usually in the summer or the fall. And last fall, five weeks of tour turned into nine, which is great, uh, except that I missed my honey. So that, that song happened. And I'm looking for, I'm looking for words. Here. Everything's a trade-off. <laughs> sure is. All right, so we're so happy to be here with you. I'm still a little bit like verklempt from listening to Dana's set, so if you see me like snorking and weeping, it's just the aftershocks. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> but I will tell you that um, my I come from a I come from a showbiz family. I was raised in a trunk. Everybody, both sides, uh, really. All, all the generations, like un until I started performing, they were sort of like, well, she's nice enough. Uh, you know, it's a bit of a white sheep, but it's okay. You know, she's fine. She's got a straight job. It's really, she's, we don't talk to the neighbors much about her, but, um, and, uh, and everyone's got a, a creative soul, by which I mean a typical neurology. And, um, and we're all a little high strung in particular, uh, the littlest of my little sisters who, uh, you know, it's, it's hard. It's hard having a her Ferrari between your ears and driving on city streets. Like, it's, sometimes it's rough to be her. And she likes to call me in the middle of the night and ask me questions like, am I a good person and does God exist? And is there any point? And, you know. Um, the little questions. Right? The, yeah, yeah, the small stuff. She call, likes to call me at about 4.17 a.m. Um, um, so, you know, and... Um, 
And it's all really real. Like the, the reason is not that she's a fantasist. The reason is that she's a human and she is a soul in a human body and wondering about how to do feeling, right? And, and it's a lot. So um, I wrote her this. It's called Lullaby for an Anxious Child. Hold on a sec. <coughs> going to be 24 on Saturday, but everybody needs a lullaby. <clears throat> All right. Um, I don't want to make any assumptions, and it is radio, and y'all can't see the audience. Back to the assumptions part. But hands for who knows from lesbian bed death. Any of y'all know about lesbian bed death? All right, we've got two hands. Okay. So hopefully, even if that would... So for those of you who don't know, um, lesbian bed death is what happens when uh, you have the cats, you have the same sensibility about literature and art, and you have friends, and you roast chickens or tofurkeys, as the case may be, and all of the things, and the U-Hauls happen, and you wear the same size shoe, and you haven't had sex in like eight years. Um, <clears throat> that's lesbian bed death. Unfortunately, it's rampant in my community, uh, or one of them, as I belong to many, thank goodness. And um, this is a song that I wrote 
for a friend who has a habit of dating women who forget to sleep with her. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. And um, it's called Disappointment Never Killed. Everything is fine, she says. Everything is fine. I believe her when she tells me. Everything is fine. Disappointment never killed. It won't kill me tonight. But my baby don't want me tonight. She likes me in this dress. She says she likes me in this dress. I believe her when she tells me that she likes me. Disappointment never killed. At least I think that's right. But my baby don't want me tonight. I don't know about forever. I've seen forever come and leave But I sure would like to spend some serious time with you If you would just free up one afternoon or morning or an hour or time for tea or like an evening or something We're gonna make some time she says, we're gonna make some time. I believe her when she tells me, we're gonna make some time. Disappointment will never kill, but it can feel a little tight. Cause my baby don't want me tonight. Tell him about it, Mr. Miller. to spend some serious time with you, or at least one quarter hour in your mouth. It's springtime in these jeans. I said it's springtime in these jeans. I believe I just told you that it's springtime. Disappointment never killed, but it makes a girl think twice. May there be juicier days ahead for us all. fussing with my words, I will tell you. I have a dear friend. I'm lucky enough to have a lot of friends who are not my age. And a few years ago, I said to 
a friend who was slightly younger, <clears throat> I don't have a lot of friends my age. And she said, yeah, I've noticed that. How come? And I said, I don't, I just, I don't seem to mesh well with my peers. And she said, well, that's because you say weird things like that. <laughs> um, point taken. Thank you. Um, but I'm lucky enough to, um, to have a lot of friends who are of older generations. And a, a friend of mine a couple years ago went through a, a true heartbreak with his wife. Um, and they've been married, I don't know, at that point they were married 20 something years, something like that. I'm 36. I have no idea what it's like to be married for 27 years. I've had my heart obliterated all kinds of ways, but never yet in the way that comes from a 27 year love um, being really up for grabs. And, um, and I didn't know what to do. My friend kept saying, uh, I'm just gonna go, I'm just gonna go live in a cabin in the pines. That's, and, and there were just so many silent parentheses of like, um, with your gun, with a dog, like with anyone? Is anyone gonna be in that cabin with you? Are you gonna leave that cabin? Do you plan on hanging yourself? Like what is happening? It was really, really scary. And, um, and um, every time the phone rang, I worried. <clears throat> and I didn't know what to do or how to love him, so I put myself as beside him as I could, living far away in another state and um, beside him on the piano bench, and this happened. <clears throat> Excuse me. Did everyone see the exits? Did you all, there's an exit behind, okay. <laughs> Very few of you turned around, just, 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 you'd be terrible at Simon Says, okay. This beauty and I are just getting to know each other today, so um, if we wink at each other, just let it happen. We're in a new love affair. Cabin in the pines, we've been in bending, going round the bending, nothing to do with this state I'm in. dog would know what I mean. A woman should put her eye on a team. I gotta go and no one can hear me scream. Like a cabin. I used to trust in God and man Now I'll never love again Not till my heart can let her in Into this cabin What would you know of the love of man When you've never looked beyond your can Now me I've looked but stayed within inside this cabin there's nowhere left for me to go nothing to see this cabin, just this cabin, just this cabin, in the pines. Good news is it worked out. Not causal.
I, I, uh, I can't claim that the songwriting will do that much, um, but I'm really glad that it did. And I was, um, yeah, happy to know it worked out. <coughs> so speaking of things that work out, it's been one hell of a day. I don't know about you, but I woke up throwing my breakfast up and then it kind of went from there. Um, yeah, it's funny until you're on the lawn on your knees, which is kind of actually what this day and watching Dr. Christine Blasey Ford be um, excoriated for no good reason on um, international television did for my nervous system. And um, I'm so grateful, as I said earlier, to be in a place both uh, political and not with friends and community and um, with Paul and with Dana's music and um, it's so important to be enacting our joy in the world and to be filling our wells so that we can do whatever it is that we do to, um, to cultivate decency and humanity. Okay, that's enough of a sermon from a Jewish witch. And, um, <coughs> thank you. I'm not sure I've ever gotten a rousing round of applause for just saying Jewish witch, but. You may not be alone. Yeah, fair, great. Um, so this is a song that I wrote um, because I, I, couldn't, I couldn't shake the, the gnawing on the idea, the, the phrase that I hear women say all day long, every day, which is, it's not that bad. Um, and uh, thinking about how, I don't know a single woman who's unscathed by something on a spectrum of um, all the things that we know, and, and, but sometimes maybe don't relate. You know, an, un, an unsolicited compliment that makes you feel uncomfortable about what you're wearing is on a spectrum with being thrown in the trunk of a car, right? It's not the same thing, um, but what happens is that the house of cards of, um, violence and insanity that is patriarchy allows for that to happen because we all say it's not that bad. Oh, he, uh, I was being catcalled, but he didn't touch me, so it's not that bad. Um, I got groped, but I didn't get raped, so it's not that bad. I got raped, but I didn't get killed, so it's not that bad. I have heard women say those words. What human capacity, genius, creativity, skill, happiness, is derailed because women every day all over the world have to do the Star Wars trash compactor holding space saying is not that bad. I was six when he touched my place I didn't know his name he didn't look me in the face and I I walked away as I fell from grace but it's not that bad and later on in the subway there I felt his breath as he smelled my hair and there wasn't room in any other car but it's not that bad I was raised in a world of men taught to talk and dress for them never mind the cold of my self respect cause it's not that bad Friends, they told me of the things they'd seen. So I was young, but I was never green. They hoped that someday I would know to scream if it got that bad. Walking home on that bright cold day, he broke my nose, told me down and stay, but he he finished and I got up and walked away. So it's not that bad. On my street in front of the corner store, I returned his smile, but I guess he wanted more. Cause now 
I can't tell you how these stitches tear, but it's not that bad. I was 12 when I died to life, 42 stitches and a kitchen knife. My legs closed and do not passage give, but it's not that bad. I got the nerve to tell him to go, but he showed up again with a gang in tow and a, a gun in hand just to settle the score. If I die, it won't be my problem anymore. So it's not that bad. I've been good. I've stayed my hand I should go to the promised land but lo and behold even God is a man so it's not that bad All of those stories are true. All of those stories were told to me. And I'm so grateful for the people who have the courage to speak. If that doesn't work for you, know that we see you and we love you also. There's so much celebration now of people coming forward. Thank heaven that that is true. And there are people for whom that is not a safe choice and we love you and we're with you. And for those of you who are coming forward, we love you and we're with you. Now what? I think uh, I'll sing when I wrote. Oh yeah! Oh. I'm nowhere near the prolific writer that these two wonderful folks are. Um, I wrote this song uh, back in 1980, actually, after Ronald Reagan was elected, thinking <laughs> we're in trouble, <clears throat> and I never really felt good about the way I finished it, and kind of put it on the shelf and put it aside. Would pick it up every now and then, and write a couple more verses and never was really happy with it. Thought maybe I was just whining too much. And uh, unfortunately, I, I kind of wanted that song to stay on the shelf until about a year and a half ago or two years ago when um, we had our current administration came in and I realized, you know, I, 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 have, to, I have to finish this song. And uh, we were just talking backstage about um, how as a species we, probably have a limited amount of time <laughs> based on the way we're going. Um, and this song kind of speaks to that. I'm going to, no, that's not right. That's where I changed it. We better change our ways or we're heading for dark days Cause we're living on the line Yeah, we're living on the line Looking at a world undone and Looking how far it's gone Yeah, we're living on the line Yeah, we're living on the line Well, I'm hoping that it's not too late to turn it all around with a lot of hope and a little faith. A new way can be found. And we better get We're not the only ones who are living on the line. We're all living on the line. 
we better find a way get ready to join the fray cause we're living on the line yeah we're living on the line well the time has come it's almost gone the tide has almost turned we all got to realize we're citizens of the world so we better get underway we can't afford delay because we're living on the line yeah we're living on the line mm, we're living on the line yeah we're living on the line that's where i hear the gospel chorus and all those yeah. living 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 on the line find you some words in here. So, there, for you, madam. Thank you. You're so welcome. So, I heard you say earlier that your dream job was as a staff writer for a small record company in 1962. Yes, ma'am. Right, so my dream job yeah. is as a house butch fermenting a cabbage I grew somewhere in central Vermont, make, <laughs> make, making a quilt, raising a goat, and once a year opening for you. Come on. Dude. Yeah. So the fact that I got to play on the same stage and after you feels like I'm really, I'm working at it. You know, now all I gotta go do is grow a cabbage. <clears throat> um, it's hard, there's a lot of cabbage. There's a lot the of worms. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My German grandmother taught me to sew them up. Do you uh, do that? No. Yeah. yeah, you gotta sew your cabbages shut and then the worms can't get them. What? Yeah, and then you have these like Frankenstein cabbages. I don't know this Vermont wisdom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> by, by way of Bremen Haven. Yeah, okay. no, she's amazing. Okay. Um, oh, my grandmother. I find about so many cabbages. So much. Yeah, she taught me so much. Um, every conversation she and I ever had, at some point, she would say, never give up. I, like, we'd be talking about, like, making an omelet or, like, what happened <laughs> with her. Billy, never give up. And she came here in 1953 with a husband, two kids under 10, no English, and less than $50. So I believe her. And, uh, yeah, amazing woman. So speaking of never giving up, remember that showbiz family I told you about? It's, let's try that again. You remember that showbiz family I told yeah. you about? <laughs> We want the people at home to know that there were humans in this room. <laughs> we weren't just talking to ourselves. So um, I also have a large extended family in that way, of uncles and aunties and part family. And I was talking with one of them last fall about um, Weinstein. And he said, oh yeah, I know that guy. He's a terrible, terrible man. He really, he really did me wrong once. I've seen terrible things. And I thought that my friend was going to uh, tell a story that was pertinent to the current climate in which we center women, for example. And instead he told me a story, uh, have I tired you out? Instead he told me a story. I'm trying for dramatic effect. Thank you. <laughs> instead he told me a story in which um, Weinstein offered him what amounted to a bad business deal. He said no and they both walked away, right? No one's career was ruined, no one's personhood was unmade, no one's body was violated. and. Um, that to me just doesn't have, I'm sorry it happened, shame that the guy wasted 20 minutes of his time. <laughs> um, 
and he's a bad, bad man. Not really for that reason. Um, you know, being a schmuck is not illegal. <laughs> much, not much as it should be. Um, <clears throat> I mean, so, uh, so it was, it, it's upsetting, right? It's upsetting to, um, wonderful to have allies and, and we become allies when we truly listen, especially to the experiences to which we ultimately cannot possibly understand. And it's our presence and our witness and our listening wholeheartedly that actually turns us into an ally. So when I got off the phone with that guy, I wrote this. So I was talking with a friend of mine the other day about this moment, and he said, I know just what you mean. Because for longer than you've been alive, I've been a player in this showbiz machine. And then he told me a story of a man he called a pig. He said, that man tried to cheat me once, and he tried to cheat me big. Well, my friend couldn't see what was so clearly true, that this moment has nothing to do with him and every woman he's ever known can say she too. But that's the thing about power. It doesn't have to know itself. But I'll tell you, in that moment, he sure missed an opportunity to know me because he could have said this. I have stood by still I have accepted gifts that weren't given me and took them as a sign of an exemplary God's will I have looked on I have looked away And I'm ashamed to say I didn't do one goddamn thing to change the scene all myself, but not today. So some weeks went by and I recounted this whole scenario to another friend of mine and she said, I know just what you mean. Cause for longer than you've been alive, I've been a woman in this man machine. But what's more, she said, and she looked at me over her cup of tea. She said that it's also true, longer than you've been alive, I've been waiting for a white woman to say those words to me. So I said this. I have stood by, I have stood still, I have accepted gifts that weren't given me and took them as a sign of an exemplary God's will. I have looked on, I have looked away, and I'm ashamed to say I didn't do one goddamn thing to change the scene all myself, but not today. Not today, not today, cause I wanna change enough to take a look at things the way they really are and say no, not today. My friend nodded to me. And she drank her tea and she left. I figured my soul had been seen 
and found both worthy and wanting. Fair enough. I don't know what to do with that just yet. What to cast off or what to keep. But when in doubt, ask a poet. And the poet said, don't go back to sleep. I have stood by, I have stood still, I have accepted gifts that weren't given me, and took them as a sign of an exemplary God's will. I didn't do one goddamn thing to change the scene on myself, but not today. Not today. Not today. Because I want to change enough to take a look at things the way they really are and say, no, not today. just gonna thank you so much we're gonna play you one more um, thank you gentlemen and Gail for having us here at stage 33 it, this is um, this is the new world order because it's the old world order right it's us people in a room together uh, and that will be the thing that keeps us together so thank you for coming out it's wonderful to be here with you thank you for doing this it's so wonderful to be here with you Dana, thank you so much for coming. Um, I, yeah. um, and Paul, thank you for just being the truest, darlingest friend. It meant so much even to just drive down with you today. Um, it's a, it's been a, I have had a really hard day. Yesterday was not any easier. And, um, and it has just meant the most to my heart to get to be with you and to make this music with you. Thank you. Always a pleasure. Um, I was going to say something else that I probably thought was going to be funny and it's gone now. <laughs> that was it? That was it. Just <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're going we're gonna to sing you one more and, um, and it's a sing-along. Uh, some of you have heard it. There is one verse, one word in each verse changes. I will feed it to you. It's it, a verb. It is a verb. It is a thing to sing, not a thing to do. Um, at one point in one show, there's a line, may it be that I rise with you, and a whole bunch of people started to sit up, and I heard someone go, sit down, it's not synagogue. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe it is. Um, we all worship in so many different ways. Um, so we're going to sing you the first verse. You can get it in your ears. And then we're going to pause and make significant eye contact. <laughs> and then we're going to start all the way from the beginning again, and go through. Thank you so much for being here and thank you for making music with us. May it be that I sing with you. May it be that I sing with you. May it be that I sing with you. Voice for the voiceless Voice among voices with you. All right, so you've heard it. That's the entire song. The word that's going to change is going to be sing. We'll start by saying, may it be that I sing with you, and then it's going to get crazy after that. So just stay with us. Here we go. You ready? 
May it be that I sing with you. May it be that I sing with you. May it be that I sing with you. Voice for the voiceless, voice among voices with you. May it be that I stand 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 with you. Voice for the voiceless, voice among voices with you. May it be that I walk 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 with you. Voice for the voiceless, voice among voices with you. Now, I'm half deaf. I can sort of hear you. I can see your mouth's moving. That's nice. You all look like happy people. So either the uh, high fructose corn syrup is getting to you and or you're really singing along. But um, if it mattered what you were saying and you could feel your ass in that seat and you could feel your heart in your chest, what would you sound like? May it be that I rise with you. 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 Voice for the voiceless, voice among voices with you. May it be that I sing with you. May it be.